Okay, this question is asking use for your uh, a part is asking use for a transform to determine the bandwidth of signal g of t sync phi omega g of t is equal to sync phi omega t and then b part applying the convolution theorem determine the Fourier transform of sync square phi omega t and its bandwidth and then c continuing up to apply convolution theorem determine the Fourier transform of sine as sync of four phi omega t and its bandwidth so the for a signal g of t bandwidth uh, band limited to b hertz the signal g n of t is band limited to n b hertz <coughs> okay now let's go ahead and do that so first uh, we are going to do the a part in the a part is asking use Fourier transform to determine the bandwidth of signal g of t sync phi omega t okay <coughs> the provider function is g of t is equal to sync phi omega t and uh, there's a property for duality property it says that when we have sync phi t tau that is equal the Fourier transform of that is 1 over tau rectangular f divided by tau okay and if you look at what we have here is thing phi omega t now uh, you notice we have phi here t here only the difference is omega so this tau is basically the omega so what we have to do is we have to replace all the tau here is with omega this is going to be one over omega rectangular f over omega <clears throat> okay so this is going to be like um so this is a rectangular so if you draw the rectangular this looks like this okay and for the height what is the height the height is the amplitude right here this amplitude is height one over omega and what is the t by two so this omega is t the f over whatever the value we have that's t so this is going to be negative omega by two and this one is positive omega by two therefore the bandwidth of this one is hence the bandwidth of this one is omega by two <coughs> okay that's for the first part that's a part now let's look at the b part b part says applying convolution theorem determine the Fourier transform of sync square phi omega t and its bandwidth <coughs> okay now let's look at the convolution theorem convolution theorem says If you multiply two functions of t x1 of t and x2 of t that one is equal to 1 over 2 phi multiplied by g omega that's for a transform of <coughs> so let's say x1 omega so you can uh, I'm gonna erase but only <coughs> x1 omega that is Fourier transform of x and that one convoluted with x2 omega okay that's Fourier transform of x2 of t <coughs> so if x1 of t is equal to x2 of t In this case, what do we have here? Here we have 
<coughs> sin square pi omega t and um, if it's sin square pi omega t then if both of them are equal then we are going to have sin pi omega t <coughs> <clears throat> okay so if so if both of them are equal then one of them is going to be think in our case we are doing the b part okay so when we multiply sing and sing that's how we can get sing square so sing square pi omega t is going to be 1 over 2 pi times e omega convoluted with p omega okay and here what we are going to do is we we know that this one is rectangular we found out the sink of phi omega t already that is a rectangular shape with the negative omega over to to omega over to interior and uh, one over omega height okay this is all we know <laughs> now we are going to see convolution of <coughs> convolution of two rectangular two rectangular rectangular signal with same width <clears throat> okay now what we have to do is we have to draw these two rectangular we already had so i'm just copying this rectangular that is with negative omega to omega by 2 to omega by 2 range and 1 over omega but uh, before that we can look at the general term like when we convolute Two of this rectangular what's going to happen in a generic form <clears throat> so let's say this is the one we have and the height is a and this one is negative t by 2 and then this one is t by 2 <clears throat> and we are convoluting with another rectangle for that one also we have the height We have the height a and uh, the period is negative t by 2 to t by 2 <clears throat> if we convolute these two what will happen let's call one x1 let's call one x2 and what will happen is we will get a triangle like this okay <clears throat> now what will it be uh, what will be the <coughs> height of this triangular that is basically a square t and what will be the range right now that is negative t to t so this is what has to happen <coughs> now let's look at what we have here let's draw let's look at and bring it to new page and uh, here I'm going to draw two, two triangle again. I mean two rectangle again. And then uh, that one derives the triangle. <coughs> <clears throat> okay so in our case this is the g omega and g omega and uh, what is what else <clears throat> 
you look at the height that is one over omega and the range negative omega two to omega two so here put one over omega this is also one over omega here convoluted this two and that one is equal to this one over omega one over omega and the going from distance omega by two to omega by two minus omega by two to omega by two and when we convolute two rectangular this is the results we have to derive the height will be a square t so here we have one over omega one over omega so if you put one of hmm, one over omega square that is one over omega square okay one over omega square and then if this is t by two then t is omega so one over omega square multiplied by omega that is one over omega again so the height is going to be same and if this is t by 2 then the new range we are going to have is negative t to t it's going to double so if it's negative omega by 2 this is going to be negative omega and this one is omega <coughs> okay and that's all we have to know and we know that bandwidth is basically from distance from the origin so here bandwidth is, was omega by 2 so here the bandwidth is omega <clears throat> okay now we have done the part 2 that's part b applying convolutions to the theorem determine the Fourier transform of sinc square phi omega t and its bandwidth continuing to apply convolution theorem determine the Fourier transform of sinc power 4 phi omega t and its bandwidth so now we are going to do this one more time <coughs> in the c part c part we have sinc <coughs> 4 <coughs> power 4 phi omega t and uh, that can be written as sinc square phi omega t times sinc square phi omega t <coughs> okay so again now uh, now we are going to do convolution of two triangular now let's see what happens so first i have this triangular here and we are going to convolute with another triangular And that's going to derive a new graph okay um and this one was negative omega this one was omega and the height was one over omega and for the and we are convoluting these two and here um <coughs> hmm. convoluting these two so what gonna happen is the new width we are gonna have is minus 2 omega and then 2 omega that's all we need to know so the bandwidth of this here what they ask continuable condition determined for a transform of think for phi omega t and its bandwidth <coughs> so the bandwidth we are going to have here is Two omega. Okay. <laughs> so 
and the Fourier transform like uh, the convolution is basically 1 over 2 pi multiply by T omega convoluted T omega here also this one so this one graph multiply by 1 over 2 pi and this one also multiply by 1 over 2 pi here as well because 1 over 2 pi convolution of these two gives the <clears throat> so bandwidth is 2 omega and uh, the final question is asking show that for a signal g of t band limited to b hertz the signal g n of t is band limited to n b hertz we saw that for a signal g of t band limited to b hertz the signal g of n of t is band limited to n b okay so here if we are doing the b part if signal g of t has bandwidth b bandwidth b then <coughs> the bandwidth of g of t is b omega okay um so if uh okay not b of g of t is b then if it's okay we already mentioned that if signal b if g of t has bandwidth of b then bandwidth of t square of t that's going to be 2 h 2, two b and then bandwidth of bandwidth of t power 4 t 4 of t is 4 b so each time the square doubles you can see ba bandwidth also double it happens in our example as well like initially we had omega by 2 but we square that and we got the bandwidth of omega then we square that again and we got 2 omega so it doubles like this so we can say from uh, conclusion from above conclusions maybe from above conclusions a comma b comma so therefore we can say bandwidth of t n of t will be equal to n times bandwidth that's basically it i hope you guys find this video helpful thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe my channel see you guys on my next video